Hi, I'm Kristen and this is Scrap Fabric Love. And today we're gonna take some old jeans, some batting leftovers, and some super skinny strips of quilting fabric trimmed from other things and make some raw edge strip quilt blocks. So I uh, hope you stick around. Uh, the denim is optional if you don't have it, but let me show you what I'm thinking with it. So I have two tubs of strips that are kind of overflowing in my sewing room. <laughs> some of them are wide enough to use for something like uh, scrappy binding or something like that because they're like bits of jelly roll strips and stuff like that, but some of them are not. Some of them are quite thin. Um, that's not quite two and a half. This is quite skinny. So what I want to do is clear some of this, I don't know if it'll be all of it, <laughs> and make some strip quilt blocks. If I totally get going with it and I love it, I could trim these down um, to match the skinny ones, but I mostly want to use the skinny ones and then see where I'm at uh, and whether I can store the rest of the strips away <laughs> or make or go ahead and make a scrappy binding and get them cleared. But these are just not fitting on my shelf at the moment. So we need to do something. So what I'm going to do is make some strip quilt blocks, except I'm not going to make the whole block out of strips, as you might have seen. And I'm not doing any stitch and flip. I'm going to do super easy, raw edge, thin strip quilt blocks. And the base for these could be anything, but of course I'm me, so it's going to be old jeans. <laughs> it's going to be denim. Uh, so let me show you what I'm using. Okay, so this is the materials I'm starting with. Um, I've got the skinny strips that I showed you before. They're roughly, I don't know, let's see. Um, that was about a half an inch. Is it a half inch? Anyway, a little over a half inch wide. This wide one is about an inch and a half kind of thing. It, it doesn't really matter. It um, has to do with how many you're going to use on the block, depending how wide they are and how big your block is. So I'll get to that. And then I've got some leftover batting. So this was like, a, I often buy my batting too large or cut it too large. And then I've got like a strip when I'm finished. <laughs> so I'm going to do my strip blocks, quote as you go. That's what I like to do with denim specifically because um, I use stretch denim. Folk always ask me about this. Can you use stretch denim in a denim quilt? And I'm like, yes. The only time I've had problems is when I try and do a whole denim quilt with stretch in it on the long arm then it gets stretched. If I do it, my other method, quilt as you go, eat any quilt as you go method really, then it tends to hold its shape and it's not a problem. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, and these are some old bits of jean leg and stuff like that. So if you haven't watched the channel before, my favorite thing is old jeans and quilting scraps. But anyway, uh, so I have done another quilt similar to this, uh, which was also quilt as you go. You can look it up. I'll link it in the description. It used kind of leftover bits of binding strips. So quite similar really. Uh, but we're going to use more strips in these blocks and I'm going to be able to chain piece them more because these strips are quite long. And those ones as well, I did some, the previous quilt, I did some like, uh, quilting lines before we added the strips. I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm gonna leave myself some space to add some additional quilting at the end if I want to, but I won't need to, cause I'm gonna be quilting all the way through the blocks. So it should be fine. Right, so you can make these blocks obviously whatever size you want. I am kind of letting myself be dictated by the size of the denim I have. And a lot of these strips of that I have, the this one here, this must be like from the calf section, maybe of my husband's jeans. I'm not sure. Um, the biggest I feel like I can get is seven inches square. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut some denim squares that are seven inches, some batting squares that are seven inches. There's loads of different methods of quilt as you go that have you uh, cut different sizes of batting. Uh, and I have used several different ones on this channel. But the one I'm doing now is what I call the false back method. So I keep the batting same size as the block. If you want to do another method where you don't have the batting in the seams, I totally get it. Uh, and I will link in the description to another video I have, which is uh, seven ways to quilt as you go without hand stitching. So 
Uh, you could pick one of those instead if you don't like the one I'm using now. But basically, I'm not adding the backing right now. The backing's going to go on when whenever it is that I get the quilt done. I'm not sure whether this is going to be a quick project or a long-running project. We'll see how I go. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to cut my squares of denim and some squares of batting and then show you how we get started. Okay, so I've cut some uh, batting squares to seven inches, some denim squares to seven inches, and I have my random pile of skinny strips. I'm not interfacing anything, so I'm not putting any interfacing on the denim because I'm gonna quilt it onto this. That's gonna secure it. And I am all I'm gonna do with these is press them so they're not wrinkled. For once, I'll press before I piece. <laughs> And that's it really. So the the reason I kind of am doing this take on a previous uh, denim and scraps block that I've done before is I wanted something super easy I could kind of whip through a little faster. The other version, I really like how it looked. Uh, I'll put a picture up on the screen, but the blocks took maybe a little bit longer than I think these are gonna take. So that's the idea, quick and simple denim and skinny strips block. So let's get sewing. Okay, so I've got all my stuff at the sewing machine, if you can see it. So all I'm gonna do is start by layering a batting square with a denim square. And I am aiming to put about three strips across the middle of this block, three thin strips, I think. So for example, here's a little thin strip. If I start that a little bit to the left of the point, and then I've got this one, and then I've got this guy. Then I'm kind of, you know, there's still a bunch of the block to see. You're gonna get that kind of X effect that you get with these kind of strip quilt blocks. I kind of like that. So I'm not strictly measuring, but if I had, let me find, hang on, if I had a thicker one. So if I had something like this, that, that almost, like a two and a half inch strip, that almost takes up the whole thing as it is. And there's other places I can use thicker strips. So I'm kind of using this block as a way to use the ones where I'm like, what, what am I gonna do with that? <laughs> so that's, that's the idea. Uh, and I'm gonna chain piece them, but some of them are longer than others, right? So this one's only going to uh, cover one block and then I'll start the next block uh, let me just get one hand with, and of course I, I color coordinate my strips. I didn't say that, but I put, I, if you've watched the channel before, you won't be surprised, but <laughs> I'm going to put the same colors together and then we'll see what that ends up, uh, looking like at the end. So then here's one, is that could be long enough? No, that's not long enough. Okay. So then I've got this one can go here and then this one. So uh, I'll show you in a second, but like, so I'd be, ch you could do this. If you had a super long one, where was that? So I've got this super, super, super long mustard one that just keeps going and going and going. Once I've pressed that, I could be chain piecing tons of blocks with it, right? But I wanna make sure that I had enough of other ones of this color because I'm doing the color coordinating to make sure I have enough. If you're not color coordinating, it doesn't really matter. You can just keep going and going. So anyway, I'll show you just so you get the idea. It's, it's really simple. I'm just talking too much, that's all. Right. So I have put my stitch length on three because I am quilting and piecing at the same time. I'm not worrying about whether this is super straight or whether we're, we're ending at exactly the same place here. They might, all the points might not, when we put them together, might not be 100% matching, but it'll be good enough. And we're doing, it's like raw edge. So you're gonna see the raw edge of this uh, quilting fabric and it'll get kind of fuzzier as you wash it and stuff. So it's going to be a, you know, picnic blanket look. So we don't need to be super precise, which is good. So I'm going to start fairly close to the edge, but we're going to be doing more than one quilting line on here. So it's going to get secured down. I did also do another denim and orange peel block um, previously and I didn't use fusible and I didn't use enough quilting lines and I did end up having to come back and stitch some of those down later. We're not going to run into that with this because we're going to stitch it down <laughs> and it's going to be secure. Okay.
So here's the next block and I'm just lining up the next piece of fabric that I wanna use here. And you can do as many of these as you want, but I'll just show you a few at a time uh, so you can see where I'm going with it. Okay, so here's my next one. I'm not basting it because it's just a square. It'll be, it's going to be fine. Um, and I'm just kind of going so that this strip is right to the left of the center. Is that right? Left, yes. <laughs> left of the point. Okay, and then I'm following along with this edge of my presser foot. I hope you can see that, don't know. And I can probably get one more, I think. I'm using a mix of denim colors, just whatever I had that was big enough to cut a seven inch square out of. But again, you could make these bigger. And if you were making the blocks bigger, then you could use your two and a half inch strips as well if you wanted, uh, and you wouldn't be covering too much of the block. And so now I'm going to continue on with the, like I could keep going and going, right? <laughs> Chain piecing. But I'm going to I'm going to continue on with the additional quilting lines on this one. And then I'm going to add the second one and the third one. So we'll do that. So I've got a little tail here. So I'm just going to spin this out the way so I can get this one in where I want it. And I'm going to put now put my presser foot up against the stitching line I just did. And then I'm just gonna cut my chain apart here so that I can continue on with them. Doesn't really matter which one's next, this one will do. And again, this chain could be much, much longer. So we could be doing almost all of the, and you could be switching strip colors um, as you go. But I'm just gonna show you the basic technique with these four blocks, I think. Okay, so once I'm at this point, gonna snip a few of these loose threads off. We can do that whenever. Um, once I'm at this point where I've got like less than a finger space or maybe a pinky space, depends how big your finger is, right? <laughs> Just like uh, those are a half an inch maybe left, I'm gonna layer the next one on, right? So I'm gonna find another white strip here. Okay, so here's another one. And I'm just gonna layer it right basically up against the quilting line I just did. And we don't need to be precise again, but anyway. And then with a short strip like this, I just have to double check if that's gonna be long enough. It isn't right here. So I'm gonna turn that and find another strip for it. So I've got another one of the same fabric, so I'll do that one there. And I suspect this one is, will not be long enough again. No, it's not. Okay, so I'll spin that. Right, then I've got this other one. This is a little bit thinner, so we're just going to end up with three central 
um, strips that are not necessarily, like sometimes it might go over a bit further here than here, depending how wide your strips are. So it's kind of a, uh, you could obviously make them all the same width if you want it to always be the same. This one is long enough, so we're just gonna keep going with this one. Okay, now if I wanted, if I was missing another white strip, I could piece these together to get me another long strip for another block. Right, now I'm gonna pivot with this because this is long enough to chain piece with something else, but I'm, I wanna finish these white blocks uh, and just show you. So I'm gonna pivot that one and continue on with the quilting lines on this second one here. So this is the one we just added previously. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my third strip to this one because I've just got a tiny bit left on this one. Again, I'm just gonna line, I'm lining up the raw edge with the last stitch line I did just so that I have, make sure that everything is getting stitched down and staying down. <laughs> So this one, I hope you can see that, is pretty much done. In terms of the spacing of where I would normally put the line, I wouldn't have another stitch here, but this is a bit too much flat for me. Um, so because we're using variable width strips, we're not always gonna end up with like totally even. So I'm just gonna go as close as I can to the edge here, um, just to, so it doesn't flip quite as much, but still gonna be a little bit of a raw edge to fray. Okay, so now all I'm doing, thought I was recording when I trimmed those two, but thankfully I've got two left. <laughs> I didn't hit the record, record button. Anyway, all I'm doing now is trying to trim off these little scraggly edges. So we want to keep the size of the block. Uh, yes, things will have shifted a little bit with the quilting, but they should all shift similarly the same. So we're not going to stress about that. We're just following the line, whichever line you see, the denim square or the batting. If it's shifted, you know, follow whichever one you can see and just trim off those edges and it'll be just fine. If you prefer to square it up with a, like make sure double check and square it up with a square ruler, you can do that too. But I cut it once, I don't wanna do it again, so. <laughs> So I just have these little bits, save those, use them for stuffing and something, whatever, right? Okay, so now I've got my four blocks and I'm gonna set them out as you would pretty much any strip quilt. And as you can see, they don't all necessarily match exactly here, but they're all gonna meet in the middle, right? And hopefully you can see that. And you can move them around if you don't like the two fabrics touching that are the same or make it look like it actually goes straight through because you've been strip piecing these longer bits. I have two more here that I did with some shorter strips earlier. So if you want to see it with like more variety, obviously it's all still white here, but <laughs> anyway, um, so like that. 
right? It almost looks like I'm in Scotland. It almost looks like a cell tire because <laughs> it's blue, mostly blue. That's black denim, but blue with the white cross. I'll, maybe I'll put a picture of the Scottish flag up for you if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, that was totally unintentional. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, you can play around with it. I was intending to do kind of lots of different colors of strips and show you that. Um, I'm liking the white. I don't, and I don't know how many white strips I have left, so I might keep going with the white and see how much I've got and then see what, I, what, what the other colors are. Um, cause I was thinking more like I would have enough for a block or two of one color and then a block or two of another, which might still be the case. I haven't measured my strips. You guys know I never measure very much. So, um, but the joining method will be the same as with my other denim and scraps quilt as you go quilt. So I would be putting these two together and these two together. I would iron open the seams and then sew them to each other. So maybe I'll do one of those to show you and then I'll leave you with that for now. I don't know when I'm going to finish this quilt. When I do, I will do a finished quilt video, but uh, I've got other stuff I'm working on. So I don't know that it'll be next week. Sometimes I do uh, a couple in a row, but uh, I think there might be some space with this one. So if my batting has shifted, I'm going to follow the denim edge for my quarter inch seam and I can trim anything else later or leave it or whatever. So I'm lining up the denim squares to make sure that they are lined up with each other and off we go. I have my IDT, I uh, can't remember what it stands for, on the FAF, which is like a built-in walking foot, which is why it doesn't look like I'm using a walking foot, but it acts as one. So if you're doing layers of denim and batting and everything like that, and you don't have something like that, uh, then you should probably put your walking foot on. Yeah, should have mentioned that before. Okay, so now I'm gonna press open my seams for this. Okay, so I've got those two now with the seams pressed open and I'm gonna put them together. And I'm just gonna find one clip to match up the centers. If you're worried about bulk, then do go and check out some of the other methods or don't use denim would be another <laughs> another idea. It doesn't have, this block does not have to be on a denim base. It's just, that's just how I roll. But um, you could do it on a quilting cotton base. Uh, and you can also uh, add your batting later, make your batting a quarter inch smaller, all those cool tips that other people use. This is easier for me, but you're gonna find your own way, I'm sure. So here's that block finished. It, it will now probably need a bit of trimming. So, but I would wait till the end to see what size all my blocks are and they might end up being a smidgen smaller. Or if it's just little bits like this, maybe they don't, maybe we leave them and we leave that in the seam. Now the middle is not gonna lie bulky here because there's all these strips and there's denim and there's batting. Uh, it doesn't bother me because, because um, when I go to put the backing on, what I'm likely to do, my almost favorite way of quilting with denim and dealing with stuff like that is to stitch either side of the ditch and that will flatten it, especially if I do it here too. Uh, and that'll be fine. But as I said, there's other ways to deal with that in terms of not putting the batting in the seam in the first place. That would definitely help you. Uh, or skipping out the denim. Uh, there's lots of options for that, but this is this works for me. 
so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you did like this one and you want another variation of it with less strips and uh, just a bit of a different way of doing it, um, then do look for the denim and scraps quilt video, which will be linked above or in the description or something. Uh, there's two videos for that, how I made the block and then how I put the quilt together. And I will let you know when and if I finish <laughs> this version and whether I end up using other colors or I just go with white for the strips. Let me know what you think. Should I make it all sorts of colors or should it be denim and low volume strips? Should I wait until I have enough strips? I don't know. Uh, okay, so I if you like scrappy videos like this, and you're not already subscribed, then please do uh, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks so much for spending time with me. Bye.